Hi everyone, Kyle here from Wide Awake PH. In today's episode, we'll be talking about another affordable plastic flat bottom dripper. And that's this, the Suji Wave. I think it's a very interesting episode that we have here today. It's because this is another Asian-made flat bottom dripper, this time coming from Indonesia. So in the last episode, we were talking about the Timor B75. That, that is a flat bottom dripper that was designed and made in China. So today we have another Asian dripper designed and made in Indonesia. So this is a pretty interesting dripper with a lot of like familiar um, designs or industrial design. It's a very familiar industrial design. That's what I'm trying to say. That's because it takes heavy, heavy inspiration from the Kalita Wave, the iconic flat bottom dripper from Japan. But the difference is they made it in plastic. Whereas the Kalita Wave, you can't really find that particular dripper in this plastic material. It usually comes in glass, stainless steel, or a higher end Chubami version that comes in copper. I prefer plastic, it's indestructible, you, you know, you're not really that afraid of handling it or breaking it. What makes the Suji Wave different is that they add these three little air holes to help, in theory, prevent clogging. So that's pretty much it. Because in terms of size and dimensions, they're very much similar. So the base of this dripper, like the smallest portion here, is four and a half centimeters. And then um, of course, it gradually becomes wider and wider as we go up the dripper. And here at the highest point, it's 7.5 cm. Whereas the height is a compact 5 cm. So definitely a very small and compact kind of brewer. So now let's go over this brewer's performance or sweet spot. And let's talk about what kind of coffees this can make. The Suji Wave is a very compact flat bottom dripper. As such, it accepts this filter paper, so it's a Kalita 155 size. You can see that it fits in there really, really well. It's basically a perfect fit, especially when you pre-wet this. More on that later. Um, the sweet spot in terms of dose size for this brewer is very small. I'd say 10 grams to 13 grams, and 13 grams I think is kind of pushing it. Um, for me, my sweet spot is 12 grams. So let's talk about this brewer's pros and cons. Because, you know, it's such a familiar design and apparently they try to improve upon the Kalita Wave by adding these three small holes. So like, let's talk about it. So for the pros, um, I like this brewer because it's small. So that's one potential pro, depending on who you are. Brewing coffee from 10 to 12 grams is fun because you get to brew more in a day. So that for me is a pro because I enjoy coffee brewing. I enjoy playing around with my recipes. Oh, not just even playing around with my recipes. I enjoy tasting different coffees within the same day. So in that regard, if I'm trying, and I'm trying to control my caffeine intake, um, brewing 10 to 12 grams at a time allows me to brew maybe three cups a day um, instead of two larger um, larger brews. So that's definitely a pro for me. Another benefit is that it doesn't really have the stalling or clogging problem that really plagues the stainless steel Kalita waves. So in that sense, the addition of these three kind of air holes that lets the air pressure in and out is effective. So that's another major pro. And finally, I think the biggest pro of all is how cheap, or not cheap, but affordable and accessible this brewer is. This comes in at only 400 pesos. And I just bought it from Shopee. So, you know, if you have those discount codes, promo, promos, whatever, that you can have in Shopee, you can get this under 400, shipped from Indonesia. So in that sense, it's a really nice, accessible, easy to get flat bottom brewer. But now, let's go to the downsides which there are quite a few, and you should expect quite a few downsides given the very low cost of this thing. So 
So one downside with this brewer is that when it's time for you to pre-wet the Kalita Wave paper filter or any, you know, flat bottom dripper paper filter, that is, it's rather tricky to do it right. Because unlike the B75 video, uh, the B75 dripper, it makes use of this kind of system wherein the ribs are running horizontally around or across the brewer. Unlike the B75, those have vertical ribs. And those vertical ribs do help or do assist in placing the filter paper with accuracy. So that when you do pre-wet, it doesn't deform. Unlike this, if you don't do it carefully, you run a rather large risk of deforming this, this wave filter. And once the wave filter is deformed, you will have an inconsistent brew because the bed won't be perfectly flat. It doesn't sit perfectly well with the brewer. It doesn't take the shape that it's supposed to. And you will just have an inconsistent result. So you cannot replicate your brews. And that's very frustrating. So let me show you how to do it. So like, you kind of have to push it down a little bit, pour a little bit of water in the center like this, and then slowly go around in circles like this. If you fail to do this carefully, I'm telling you, I promise you, it's going to deform. And for me, nakakasira ng araw or nakakasira ng brew, like, it's not fun. It's very frustrating to have to deal with. So that's one con. And the second con, and it's very much related to this point, um, I was, as I was telling you, right, we have three small holes at the bottom of this brewer and then three smaller, like, air pockets to relieve the air pressure. And that's supposed to help with clogging. So I told you it doesn't clog. And it doesn't, like, I get my brew times to be fairly good at around 2 minutes 15 to 2 minutes 45 seconds. But the problem is, it retains water. So you can see, like, it's not dripping anymore, right? But if I tilt this brewer, you can see that the Suji Wave holds on to the water down here. So even when you're supposed to be finished with your brew, there will always be that small amount of residual water or coffee stuck in this section of the brewer. So that's an area of potential frustration. And it might seem like these are relatively minor complaints, and they are. But if you're coffee obsessed, coffee passionate like I am, uh, these added frustrations add up and get kind of annoying when you do brew and you do enjoy this, this sort of ritual. The final con when it comes to the Suji Wave is the lack of range with regards to your potential brewing recipes. Why? Because of the old school kind of nature of the Kalita wave which this copies or which this like really is heavily inspired by, uh, the flow rate is very slow. And what that means is we need to brew, we need to grind coarser, like even coarser than the B75 with a similar dose size, right? Because the B75 has that, has that really nice, like open sort of bottom structure that really lets the water flow freely. Whereas this heavily restricts our flow rate. So we have to uh, grind coarser to get to the kind of flavor experience that's positive or yummy. In that regard, you don't get that much versatility out of this. You can't grind super fine. You can't get um, a higher level, a higher amount of extraction you're confined to brewing coffee that's relatively coarse relative to other brewers. So that's important to keep in mind. However, it's important to note that on the flip side of that, because it constricts you to this kind of grind size, it's easier to get good brews out of this because you're always within a small range of, of grind size, right? So it's it's basically more difficult to mess up. So you, you don't have because you don't have so much leeway or so much freedom, um, it's easier to get a successful brew because once you master the kind of grind size you need for this thing, then it's easier to find um, the grind size you need to be in in order for it to taste good for you. So uh, pro and a con, but mostly a con, especially if you're like me and you like playing around with different brews, uh, different brew ratios, different brew recipes, you know, all that stuff. You know, you know what I mean. If you're watching this, you know what I mean. It's time for us to brew now. So let me show you a, a sample recipe that I've found great success with, with most of our coffees. 
But now we'll, brew, we'll be brewing my favorite right now, Indonesian as well, <laughs> Hasbulla honey. So this is my favorite lot among the three Hasbulla coffees we have. Highly recommend you try it. It's really a gorgeous coffee. It's um, really complex, very juicy. All right, so we're dosing 12 grams of Hasbulla honey into the Suji wave. Take note, I'm grinding relatively coarse. So this is a grind size of 48 on the ZP6. If you remember, um, in our B75 video, I'm usually at around 44 to 46 on that brewer with a larger dose size. So that just goes to show you how slow the flow rate of this um, brewer is. It doesn't make it bad, it just what, it's just what it is. We're dosing 12 grams of coffee and our brew ratio will be 1 to 15, so we'll be putting in 180 ml water. What I've been enjoying doing is um, doing a two pour structure. So 90 ml first pour, 90 ml second pour, again, circle and center pour, April style. I think it gives us the kind of character I'm looking for. It's very clear, very juicy, sweet, and because of the shorter ratio, it's still rather intense, even with this coarser grind size. And then what I like to do is to make sure that all the brew water goes down completely because the brewer is so small. If we do our second pour right away, um, the brewer will fill completely. Sometimes it even overflows. So like, that's something that you'd have to take note of. If you're doing a 13, 14, 15 gram dose on this thing, um, you'll have to do a three, four, maybe even five, four structure just because the brewer is so small, right? Again, five cm depth. So keep that in mind. Oh, also on a side note, I do enjoy um, these more transparent style drippers because I just think it's rather fun to watch and see what the coffee looks like as it's dripping down. Just the coffee nerd thing. Um, it's fun. I also find that this doesn't stain as bad as the B75. Like if you watch the B75 video, you'll notice that the bottom section of that brewer is heavily stained and that wasn't really super abused. Like yes, I used it a lot, but less than three months, right? So it's, uh, you know, just an aesthetic thing if you're very concerned about that. It's something you should take note of. Okay, two minutes, 30 seconds is done. We'll um, set this aside, but I do want to show you the retention. It's basically looking dry, uh, the coffee bed that is. But if you notice, like, look at that. You see? I hope you can see that. It's um, coffee that's retained. And it, it'll only go down if you kind of like shake it around like this. And I don't think that tastes so good. So, just something to take note of. Um, also, just a tip. Um, this is too warm to drink. This will not give you the clarity and the juiciness because it's still too warm. So what I would recommend you to do is to let it cool first. You know, if you're in a rush, maybe pour it into a different carafe or a mug. Cool it down and then that's when you start drinking. That's really how you get the most out of these higher end coffees. And with flat bottom brewers in particular because the acidity is very much more integrated into the coffee experience. So just a tip. Now that the brew's done, let's get to tasting. Mm. So yeah, if you brew like this, you expect a very clean and transparent sort of brew. Um, but it's still back with a rather heavy, juicy body that I find very interesting. So the body of this will most likely be thicker and juicier compared to the B75. That will have a more like clear, vibrant sort of coffee. This one is more balanced. Um, a lot of sweetness because of the contact time, right? Because it's a slower flow rate. Still good clarity. Very, very um, pleasurable and enjoyable sort of cup. Um, so if you want, so if you try this recipe and you find it too light, too weak, of course you can grind it slightly finer. Um, yeah, just note that I enjoy this because it doesn't give me much bitterness, right? Because when you grind coarser, we extract, we get less fines in and those fines do contribute to the final bitterness in the cup. And this one 
uh, there's none of that. It's just very clean. Allows you to really enjoy all the fruits present in this coffee. I love it. It's really great. Here are my final thoughts with regards to the Suji Wave dripper from Indonesia. So, of course, the question will be, is it worth it? And of course, the answer will always be, it depends, right? If you're looking for a flat bottom brewer that does really well with a 10 to 12 gram dose size, that doesn't really have a lot of big clogging problems, then it's a pretty good buy. You know, it's 400 bucks, it's fine. But it's not an exceptional product or it's not a unique and distinctive product like I think the Time More B75 is. Uh, it's fun to play with because it's small. 10 to 12 gram doses on the B75 doesn't taste as yummy, of course, because I think the sweet spot there is really 14, like 13 to 15 grams. Um, whereas with this, 10 to 12 gram brews just have a lot of sweetness because of the... Of course, that's the sweet spot for this brewer and that's because the contact time is longer, you get a slower flow rate, the water saturates the coffee bed more evenly um, on this kind of brew, brewer with that 10 to 12 gram dose size. And that's why it's really good for those smaller brews. But if you don't need it, right? If you could just brew one gram more, two grams more, man, I think you just you should just save your extra 400, 500 pesos and get the time more because like, um, this is a little bit behind now, right? With regards to those modern flat bottom style drippers that give you a lot more leeway, a lot more flexibility, and gives you the room and the space to grow as a brewer and to find what you really like when it comes to your coffee recipes. Yeah, I mean, I really wanted to love this thing because it's so cute. <laughs> but you know, it's okay. It's 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 not bad. It's it can work if this is the kind of size and shape that you're looking for. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you liked it. So please help us like by liking and subscribing our videos. We're almost there to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. It will help us out a lot if you would subscribe so that we can finally level up our channel, level up our production values, and give you even better content. So that's it for today. Thank you so much. See you again soon.